All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Sideboard MTG. My name's Eric, and it's time for another of Deb's deck. Tonight, Deb has brought us Black White Knights, or a couple nights ago, actually, and I'm just now getting around to playing it, which means he's already posted yet another deck, and uh, that would be the $10 Goblins. I think that's his first official, like, budget deck of uh, the season, so I'm excited to see it. We played a Goblins deck Saturday on the Patreon games, and it was pretty cool. Um, this particular deck he had didn't have a sideboard. I've already worked on that, and I think I put, like, three bucks into the sideboard, so even with sideboard, we're looking at, like, a $15 deck. So that's what we've got coming up tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe if you want to wanna see that. Oh, no, chat! Where's my chat? I got you guys. I got you. I got you. Where? Bam. Oh no, it's too big. It's too big. We gotta fix it. We gotta fix it. I got this. What's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Hope everyone's great tonight. Uh, either way, if you like tonight's show, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general or want to see what we've got coming up next, make sure you hit that subscribe button. What's up, Ghost Man? Robert, how you doing, man? Uh, Sisk, what's up? Along with J Dubs, James, Juan, Ramo, Sushi, and who else was up top? I know I seen someone else up top with Sushi earlier. Um, man, I, how do I pronounce that? Buki? Just call you Buki? Maybe? Maybe not? Nate, how you doing? What's up, guys? Is everyone ready for a, for some devs deck? Right? I posted the link. I hope everyone's seen it. I mean, I, I know I'm a couple days late, but uh, we're, we're going to make do anyway. What has Dev got for us? Um, well, the best thing to do is tell you that up in the top right-hand corner, there's a little eyeball. A little, or not a little eyeball, an eye with a circle around it. Hit that, and that's going to give you a link to go straight over to Dev and watch his deck tech. But I'm going to go over the cards real quick here and kind of the idea. And uh, but I'm not gonna not gonna break it down as well as Deb did. So uh, make sure you guys check out his deck tech, and uh, there's a link in the description box that uh, could help us both. So um, yeah, check it out. Nonless bodyguard along with fatal push is the one drops here. And uh, I guess I need to say something about the land base here before I get too deep into the cards. There's a lot of sources for black with uh, three swamps and then eight split lands. And the split lands, the new split lands are just so great. Uh, the isolated chapels here. Uh, if, if you guys uh, like don't have these, pick these up. They're really, really cheap online. I think you can get like the entire set for like seven or eight bucks. But, you know, if you don't have the lands, you could always just do like me and rent them from Mana Traders, which is not bad. This entire deck, I think, comes in at 90 bucks online, something like that. Uh, or no, 90 bucks in paper. And then, um, I, wow, I, I want to say it's... Um, like 94 tickets online, I think that's what uh, what it was. So it's actually a little bit cheaper to purchase. Um, no, no, I'm getting a bad read on that. Never mind. The the histories are, are more more expensive than that. Yeah, you'll have to use the link for TCG Player to get an accurate price on paper. But uh, 94 tickets online, that's what the price is. Um, not a bad not a bad deck, but you know that's three months of mana traders, so. Um, I guess we go ahead and finish that pitch, right? If you are looking to rent cards, sign up with Mana Traders and uh, use the link in the description box or the... Or, well, use the link in the description box and sideboard MTG15 as your promo code when you go to sign up. And uh, you'll save 15% on your first three months. So for, yeah, the price of this deck, play this deck and every other deck that Dev makes, like I do. Um, so let's talk about the deck. We, pretty much everything except for one uh, or the three uh, swamps will let you cast your marshal, which is uh, an important thing. Uh, so there's only three three cards in the deck that don't produce white, or three uh, lands in the deck that don't produce white for a creature. So no problem on mana there. We've got uh, plenty of sources for our Fatal Push and our Knight of Malice. <clears throat> and then by turn four, of course, we're, we're hoping to have one of those um, so that we can start activating this ability. Uh, let me read that ability for you. Or by turn five, we need to activate the ability. Uh, you can start just tapping your knights and destroying their little dudes. And then as you get more knights, you're destroying bigger dudes. And you can swing in because you've got history giving you vigilance. And, well, your knights are, like, 
Oh man, it's just so good. They've, they've got vigilance anyway. You got history giving you knights with vigilance. You got history giving you a buff, so you're swinging in before blockers. You're actually tapping those with one black mana and this. Yeah, it puts you at vulnerable. Like makes you vulnerable to your seal aways. But you know, hey, you're gonna kill something, right? You're gonna put that on the stack. They seal it away. Then hey, whatever. You'll just cast that out later, right? Get your get your Ariel back. Ariel, Ariel. Ar Ariel? 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 Uh, what? Ariel, right? Ah, guys, I'm all tongue tied. This is going to be a long stream. Man, let me get the coffee. Let me get the coffee. Man, we need. Lamp, I need you. I need you, Lamp. All right. Ah, good coffee. Either way, we've got a, we've got a plethora of two drops here. Metallic Mimic showing up again. Wow. Wow. Just another Metallic Mimic. R-E-L. R-E-L? <clears throat> uh, sure. Let's just call her the Little Mermaid. All right. That's the, de that's the joke Dev made, but it really is. It's Ariel. R-E-L? R-E-L. R-E-L. R-E-L? Mm. All right. Well, that's enough. Dauntless Bodyguard. Good way to protect your Ariel. Uh, but uh, it won't protect it from something like a seal away if you do tap and use the ability, but... Remember, if you do tap and use the, put the ability on the stack, tapping is for the semicolon, so you're actually paying for that. Uh, that's part of uh, paying, so you will tap it. You will put that ability onto the stack, even if they do go before you even pass priority for them to cast a seal away. So even if they seal it away, you're still going to get the effect that you used. Just letting you got you guys know that little interaction. Um, I think most of you know that, that that's how that works, but um, I recently ran into someone that didn't know that just because they removed the effect did not mean that, you know, they uh, the ability doesn't go off. So I thought maybe that might be a little bit relevant. Uh, you just been calling her Ariel? Hey, hey that's that's kind of what I'm going to do. What's up, Jizz? How you doing? Albatross, Luke, Nate, For the Horde. What's up? Um, all right, guys. Let's... Uh, Let's take a look at the sideboard here. Four copies of Duress, man. I mean, he, he he's, Dev just does not like control, right? And then, of course, Blood Praise, Blood Craze Paladin. I've been wanting to stick this into a deck, and it looks like Dev's already done it. Um, just, you know, great. With all the white decks that are floating around, you've got a ton of, a uh, ton of, you know, Fumigates and st stuff like that. I am a little bit worried about that Ruinous Blast, you know, that Urza can do. Uh, but, you know, as long as, as long as we dodge Urza's Ruinous Blast, we can flash in a Blood Craze Paladin, have a really big guy, and, um, you know, just bring on the beats. I do like the fact that this does have Flash because it was actually really relevant that you would turn three your history, and then turn four, it would tick and give you a second knight, and then their turn five they would wipe the board and you wouldn't have anything and there was a game in testing where um they actually wiped my board got my uh, turn two mimic and and my uh turn four um my turn four double two drop but i actually just got to you know flash this in on um on five and uh, i was sitting there holding a, a seal away and a, and a blood craze but you know he wiped the board and i, I just had a really big body left over and it, it helped me finish the game and uh it was also there to get the buff um, so when you're on the draw, this is really good to leave open on turn five because if they wipe the board to avoid the buff, then you'll still have a really big dude that gets the buff. So jokes, jokes, jokes. Uh, things weird with uh, the Little Mermaid uh, went on a cruise. <laughs> things did get weird. 50 people watching it, only 10 likes. Oh, they'll like it when we start making some awesome, awesome plays here with Dev's awesome deck. Um, man, I, I was wanting knights. I was ex super excited about knights. Um, so, yeah. The goblin deck. You, you guys want to take a quick peek at that? Huh? huh? You want to see the you want to see the goblin deck? This is his goblin deck. Um, it's pretty simple, straightforward. Siege Gang Commanders, Goblin Barrage, uh, Goblin War Chief. Squee! Uh, so Dev put a squee deck together for you guys. Uh, fight fire with fire, wily wily goblin, lightning strikes, shocks, prospector. I mean, we know you know prospector is a thing. Fanatical firebrand, just all the good goblins, uh, including squee uh, for ten bucks, man. Uh, not a bad deal. Uh, I spent an extra you know four bucks uh, or so in the sideboard here. I I, I figure if you want to stay cheap and don't want to go for Chandra, I think that you know this uh, this deck would be looking for 
more uh, more cards to to cast and things, and this just gives you a little bit more reach. So I threw some Vance's blasting cannons in the side, a couple puncturing blows so that you know we can deal with the scarab god, uh, a crook for the same thing, a couple aether sphere harvesters. I just had them laying around even here on MTGO, like um, like these were all cards from from just that I happen to have in my collection. So like they're cards that most people should have laying around. A couple copies of magma spray, a couple Chandra's defeats. It's an uncommon. Uh, a braid, yeah, it's like a dollar uncommon or so but uh, the most expensive parts are the abrade harvesters and the uh, Mance's blasting cannons but you know if you guys picked up like any of the um, the red um, challenger decks you should have most of this stuff so either way that's what I put together for for a sideboard for devs uh, brings the whole deck in at like 15 16 bucks uh, it's not not bad and I'm expecting to be able to uh, you know to, to lay down some heat with it so uh, cool little deck and um, you know it's gonna be a lot of fun. Either way, we're gonna play the knights for tonight. I hope you guys are, are ready for this. So, um, let's see here. What what's going on? <laughs> Good on you, Luke. Good on you. Um, didn't even realize Dev had a video for it. Uh, you literally made that today and didn't even realize Dev had a video for it. I should be adding um, Chain Whirler, right? Uh, Chain Whirler, just, it, it's not in the budget. Uh, so, like, if, you know, you know, you know what? We'll worry about that. We'll worry about that tomorrow, right? Tonight, it's about nights. Oh, somebody else already got my game. I want a queue anyway. We don't want this. We want, we want queues. So, we're doing three games tonight, guys. Um... And it's gonna have to be that way for a little bit. Uh, we'll be doing three games, and then we'll go. We'll go back to leagues when I I'm settled in, and uh, we'll get the camera back up and everything. We'll go back to leagues and having some fun and stuff like that. But for right now, we're gonna keep it to three games. So, you're interested in seeing Agro Wizards build? Did you, I heard Jim Davis built one? I haven't seen the video yet because you know I haven't been watching a lot of YouTube. Um, but if Jim Davis built it, I'll run it. Like I I love to play that man's creations like just uh to play someone else's deck you kind of get an idea of their like what's going on in their brain like once you start going oh this is why he put that card in here and things like that and um anytime i get to see something that was built by you know a pro that i admire like jim davis i uh i definitely i definitely want to play it so yeah if if jim built a wizard's deck we'll play it i'll uh, i'll definitely put that on the list for later this week so We've got so much to play, guys. Like, I gotta get caught up with uh, Dev's deck, and uh, we're in queue right now. We're waiting, so I'm just kind of talking to chat. Um, but yeah, if uh, you know, we gotta get caught up with Dev's deck, and I'm not putting the theoretical ones. I'm not gonna play the theoretical ones Dev did before um, the before the release of Dominaria. But pretty much everything that he puts out from here until I guess he starts running his own decks, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna play. So, I mean, Jim Davis runs his own decks, and I play his. So I, I don't know. We we'll see where we'll see where Deb's deck goes. I mean, this is Cyborg MTG. We we play a lot of Magic. Like we, man. See, that still it sounds like I'm I'm taking from Deb's. We play Magic thing, but uh, Lampy greater than Bernice. Ooh, wow. Oh, wow. Them fighting words, man. Don't, but. But Ber Bernice is a professional streamer, though. Uh, um, oh, man. Uh, I mean, that's that's hard to... All right. Either way, we're going to keep this hand. We've got Mimics out the yin-yang. And um, is that a thing? Did I, I'm, we're just, I'm going to take that, right? Out the yin-yang. Um, I want to start with... My, like I don't I want to play this as like my fourth land I want to see if I can get this down with a mimic on the battlefield but um, if I can't then uh, hopefully the mimics will still be around for it uh, but I'm 100% keeping this so we'll just start with our concealed courtyard and pass the turn see what we get what's up Salvete how you doing oh yeah um, burnt, yeah exactly I my bad I, I just assumed everyone knew who Jim Davis was. He's like, he's my man crush, right? When it comes to magic, magic players, nah, not, not, not man crush. It's just like, he is just, 
he's an awesome dude, right? He he plays magic with his son. Like he had, they have uh, you know their time where they play mag uh, magic or other games, and, and you know he's just a cool guy. So, um, uh, all right. So we're gonna start with a mimic here, and I mean it's a. It's a white blue deck. I might be able to get some cards down here. Double mimic, throw down a, uh, you know, a knight of malice, and uh, let's call let's call knights. I think next turn I actually just want to play this and swing three. Depends on if I draw um, the white land or not. If I don't draw the white land, we're just going mimic. Like, it, it's just, it's all relevant on, oh, wow, what does he got? Does he got to get down and search here? Voltaic Servant. All right. Come on, white land would be terrific because it would allow me to swing in. Well, that's not exactly what we wanted to see, but it's not horrible either. This does um, kind of hint that we're probably going to be running into um, probably going to be running into a you know was it Thrax Thra Thraxos and yeah, something like that. This thing's a great wall though. Oh man, the servant. He's like Star Wars something. I don't know. Uh, it's just what it feels like. Just it feels like he's a giant, All right? I don't know. Uh, is this blue white historic? Probably, probably blue white historic. All of triple color three drops uh, have the same uh, rigorous mana base requirements. Oh, uh, thank you for the uh, congratulations on 3K, man. Yeah, we just hit that like uh, a week or two ago, right? Something like that. wasn't long. Um, but yeah, I was I was super excited. I mean, that was uh, hitting 3K. That's that's a that's a big milestone. Uh, you needed to see this. Well, I'm glad you could be here, Jeremiah. Oh snap! Says Jeremiah. Well, unfortunately. If we don't get another white source, we're not really going to be swinging in here. Like, being able to play uh, the Marshal right now would just... It would change things. It would allow me to swing with this Metallic Mimic. Um, man. Yeah, the Marshal, he needs three white. And, you know, it's just... We're, we've got the, the one black source here. I need to yield to this thing. He is definitely eating his clock up with this, and um, I mean, I hate that because you know, like, we're just going to be sitting here for a lot of boredom time. Um, wow! All right, whatever, whatever. So, I mean, can we set up for, like, Alpha Strike? I don't want to lose this just to kill one Voltaic Servant, but next turn, if he drops Thrax, we're in trouble. Right? All the Mimics, but yet we can't really do anything until the third one because he's got two power on the battlefield. You need some help tuning it. All right. Um, well, that is the perfect place to post your deck if you're looking for some help tuning it. Uh, post it over on the Reddit. Um, and, you know, if you just like looking through decks and looking for some innovation or something like that, there's all kinds of cool brews over there. Um, all the brews starting, uh, I guess, last, last Saturday from this point forward. Um, yeah, everything from there. 
um, is Dominaria legal for our Subscriber Sunday? So if you post it, it gets enough votes. It'll probably get some play on Subscriber Sunday. And if it's a squee deck, it'll uh, make it into our our uh, themed Subscriber Sunday. We're doing squee this month. Um, chances of hitting them on curve without all out all on color produce uh, so all one color producing mana in the mana base uh, drastically even after putting um, putting a single of colorless land right like yeah it's yeah, we have, most of the time you're gonna have this I mean most of the time I think you're gonna have this but that does I mean that's that's one of those things I mean we're just getting trapped with marshals in hand and we would have been able to swing multiple times if we would have been able to play the marshal like on turn three we would have been able to put the marshal down and swing and then on turn four play yet another marshal and or yet uh, a second mimic and a knight so um, I mean we are dodging Thrax here and we are gonna be able to get in for some damage but now he's holding up counter spells and you know Metallic Rebuke is a real thing. Features Alindra, Yehini, Modern Fane. Okay. Alright, so History of Benalia here. This is probably going to be really good. I want to get it down. Uh, but I'm also... I am highly interested in playing this. I mean, he, he needs to be able to remove this right now. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this will help us some. I'm sure he gets to seal away. But, uh, sealing away is not going to be, like, that terrific. It's going to be great, but... Right, just getting the one marshal down is just so huge. Like, what do you what do you have here, opponent? What do you got for three mana at the beginning of my combat? Really? Um. Okay. I mean, I'm willing to lose one. Uh, so if he wants to double block this one and uh, take the nine points of damage, totally okay with that. Um, any top deck land is going to give us Knight of Malice. Um, and yeah, just throwing down another Lord and, and turning things sideways is going to be going to be the plan. So he has to double block and take nine to kill this. And, and that's kind of why I'm okay with giving up. I will give up this one Metallic Mimic for for nine points of damage. Now, if I didn't swing and offer this, he would have been able to just put one and one and stop all damage. Um, but I, I, I think that, you know, if we offer the block, we can uh, we can get the, uh, the nine points of damage through. See, he is willing to lose one of his uh, Voltaic Servants. So... I mean, yeah, now he has to, you know, contend with uh, our 7-7 seven, seven next turn, um, which, you know, is pretty good. That that fights against Thrax, and, um, you know, us having 7-7s seven, is great. So, oh, wait, it'll only, yeah, this will be the 7-7, seven, seven, the next one will be a 6-6, six, six. so... Or will it get a buff from the other? Let's see, it'll get one, two, three. Yeah, it'll be a yeah, it'll it'll be a six, six. Hmm. <laughs> you threw down your like. Well, I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate it. I mean, the likes really do help. They um, they're they're how other people find the channel and, and things like that. So you know, I I appreciate when you guys hit those like buttons. You know what? I need. I like this video. I need to like it, right? What am I thinking? Don't like my own show. I like what I like. What's happening here? I like uh, how much power this this deck's just throwing down. 
Um, now he's like stuck. Like, um, I mean, I assume he's got something like settle or something like that, but um, he needs to do something real quick here. Like, if he's a Thrax deck, we're going to need to see that. Um, I mean, even if I just throw down History and then next turn throw down the Marshal and the Knight, uh, that would work as well. I'm kind of interested in getting History down and setting up for that Alpha Swing in case that goes off. Um, I mean, we'd only be two turns off of it. And um, I'm just really wanting to see that fifth mana. You know, fifth the fifth mana would really do it for me. Ooh. Auras? Hmm. Interesting. Um, okay, so that, that increased the value of playing Marshall here. Because, all right, so there's the fifth mana. So uh, we're just called knights. Um, so now we get to we get to do all the things. So we're gonna go white, white, white. Play Marshall, and he has a white permanent, which is also. But we also have a white permanent. It, it does check you uh, for our Knight of Malice first strike hexproof from white. Now that's not protection. I was looking at it a little bit wrong when I was playing it uh, the other night or playing against it. And um, it's not protection. You can still block it with a white creature. Uh, they can exchange damage, but it just has hexproof. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I think we just swing, right? Like, just turn things sideways. Um, I mean, he needs to be able to, to stop some of this damage. And um, that means that he's going to, to die. I mean, he's got to be able to stop two of our three creatures. And uh, that means he doesn't get to double block anything. And his power is not enough to double block anyway. So, like, man, we just ran over this this poor little deck. Although it's probably got, like, Karn and Teferi and all kinds of other things that it could do to us. But, yeah, jeez, Dev, what is going on with this thing? I mean... Come on, this is a this is a seven six here, and we killed a mimic. I killed a mimic to do nine points of damage, and we're still like just wow. Yeah, the opponent's like what? I I think the opponent's just a little confused. I don't think he knows exactly what's going on. I do assume that settles or something like that's coming in. Um, from the opponent, we we did see. Um, I want to be able to to get some of the bigger creatures and he did have legendary so I kind of want to bring in my profane procession right like I don't want to bring in too much I want to stay extremely aggro I want to be able to get bigger than his voltaic um his voltaic servants yeah that's what they're called um getting in the air I think is going to be really really nice so I'm going to to prioritize these the voltaic servant will most likely tap it'll attack and things like that so the silhouette is still really good um, you know, Fatal Push is actually really good because, you know, you can block Thrax if it is a Thrax deck. And Thrax is only four mana, so you can Fatal Push him. Um, so, you know, block a Knight with a Knight and then and Fatal Push Thrax, so. Wow! 90 people in here! You guys are awesome! Awesome! Um, cast Out, I kind of want to keep that, even though that we, you know, we are bringing in the Profane Procession. Being able to destroy creatures is good here. I don't really want to get into that late, late of a game, though. Um, so I'm going to cut one of these and, or one of the, uh, Ariels for a, a Sky Sovereign. And then as far as, uh, Knight of Grace, he's not really going to have as many black permanents as he's going to have white permanents. Um, so that's going to be my next cut is one Knight of Grace and then one Seal Away. So, um, yeah, I, I removed a little bit of our early uh, creature removal because I don't know exactly what he's running. Jan, you just subscribed. What, what, what do you mean you just subscribed? <laughs> um, either way, thank you, Jan. Um, so, yeah, just, um, just cutting down on a few things. I'm going to leave the cast outs in. It seems like it's a control deck. He was wanting to untap something. Why no banner? Uh, you guys, you guys will have to hit Dev up in his um, in his uh, comments if you want to know why he did or didn't put something in the deck. I just run them after he builds them. So, he was just watching Terran's Knights. 
Not yeah. I mean, there's a there's a ton of hype. It was when I was asked what my uh, most anticipated you know part of Dominaria was, I was like the arrival of the Knights deck. So um, I'm I'm excited to see it. Ragazzi, rag rag rag. Welcome, welcome to welcome to the stream. Uh, we've got uh, for all of you that are new, we are going to be running. Uh, what are we running next? We're running, uh, yeah, his uh, Goblins deck tomorrow night. So make sure you subscribe. Hit up that Goblins deck. You know you know, you want to see it. We've got a mulligan this because we've only got one land. We've still only got one land. Um, I can cycle the cast out. Uh, I don't want to go to five. We're, gonna, we're going to five. All right, whatever. Um, let's put it on the bottom. Let's just put that on the bottom. You think that uh, Ryan's Knights are the best, uh, although it'd be... Uh, maybe we'd swap Radiant Destiny with Mimics. Do you like the Mimic, or do you like the Radiant Destiny? What are you doing, dude? Wow. Okay, he just passed. Ooh, Sparring Construct. I'm impressed. I like that card. Come on, Mimic off the top. Let's do that, right? Just Mimic off the top. We do have our turn one, two, three white here, just saying. Hi, Jack. How you doing, bud? Call for uh, call for Calvary. Okay. Well, I mean, he's going to be able to make some things fairly large. Our Profane Procession is going to count as both a black and a white permanent, so that's not going to be bad. Yeah, we're we're definitely willing to take the take the damage here. What did he do with the other man? Oh, it came in tap. Okay. Um. All right. So we'll do another concealed courtyard. We'll play our Knight of Grace. I mean, the first strike's going to be extremely relevant here. It means he can't swing. I mean, he might be wanting to put, you know, like a plus one one counter on the other one, but our first striker still blocks that. I love that both of the knights have first strike. At first, I was like, you know, the knight should have, have uh, you know, lifelink, and the other one have, like, death touch or something like that. And then, uh, you know, the more I play with it, I was like, you know, kind of for the knight's lore, they're the first to ride into battle, and, you know, I like it. I like it. Um, I was just super excited about knights. I hadn't, um, I was brewing with Mono White, though, because, like, I just didn't like the interaction that sometimes you would be caught without, uh, a source for, um, all right, wow, okay. Um, oh, I messed that up, didn't I? I sure did. Yep. I should have played the history there. But I went ahead and played the tap land. I, I, I forgot this is a plains and would bring it in, so... Um, yeah. Yeah, I messed... I'm, I made a punt right there. I am going to turn sideways, so, I mean, if he wants to, uh, you know, seal away my knight, uh, we'll go ahead and get a seal away out of the way. Um, that doesn't make sense. Why would he hit them? Why would he block with both of them? I've got first strike. I don't think he understood that interaction, guys. I'm going to say that I'm, I've been relieved from my punt by the opponent punt, right? Yeah, those knights are tough. Like, and together, they, they give each other the permanent. Oh, uh, the opponent said I'm a... And, and then I can't read it because, you know, filters and all. Thank you, Justin Clay, for throwing up the pun emoji. Ah, uh, if you guys want to sponsor the stream here on YouTube Gaming, you can. And uh, you'll also get those uh, those cool Cyborg MTG emojis to use whenever you're in the live stream. Helps me, and you get to... Uh, you get to be the stream sponsor, and uh, sponsoring the stream automatically makes you a uh, stream boss down there at the bottom. You would defeat Mauve. Mr. Mauve has uh, has been our stream boss since last night. And, um, yeah. 
Any donations also uh, go to defeating stream boss. And I, I don't even like, you know what? Let's go back to magic, right? Whatever. Uh, I hate making those pitches, right? It's part of YouTube, but still. Read the cards, Eric. Okay, so this is a history of Benelia. Um, when I play this, if it resolves, which um, and looks like it's probably not going to, um, I would have immediately put a one one or a one lore counter on it. The lore counter would have then given given me the first trigger, and then after my draw step, I would have gotten the second trigger, and then after my draw step on the next turn, I would or two turns from now, I would I gotten the third trigger. The uh, the first one makes a two two knight, the second one makes a two two knight, and the third one. Um, will give all knights plus two plus one. So, uh, pretty cool little saga. I like how they work. And um, you're just reading cards verbatim. I, I hate reading cards verbatim, right? Um, but yeah, that's how these work. So, immediately after you draw a card, that is when, like, no, not after you draw a card, when you, after your draw step. So, immediately after your draw step, before your main phase, you will put the counter on this. So, you'll be able to. Uh, like, Song of Freilis was really cool in the Sporlings deck because you get to re respond to the ability. So, uh, you'll put the counter on. You can't respond to that. That doesn't use the stack. But once that counter is put on, it will put a 2-2 White Knight creature token ability onto the stack that you will be able to... What is this? That you will be able to uh, respond to that. And you could cast, like, the Sporling... Um, instant speeds and like make tokens and things like that in response to it. It was pretty cool. So, yeah, syncopate back in standard is huge, man. Like, uh, guys, get ready for that. That was that was big last time it was in standard. It's gonna be big again. Syncopate is an amazing spell. It does exile. Like, oh man, it's great. As long as you control Teferi Planeswalker, this will get plus four plus zero, and so that'll be a six six. That's pretty good. Um, so, like, that kind of prioritizes Profane Procession. I think it prioritizes a Profane Procession. Like, if we get it down right now, it's going to be really hard to deal with. Um, yeah. We still need to draw a land, though, so is it just getting this down better? So if he doesn't have to ferry... Yeah, if he doesn't have to ferry... Then, um, then this is just better. I mean, it can block. Sisk! Ah, uh, cast last breath, last breath versus, uh, target stream bomb. <laughs> awesome, Sisk. Let's see how much damage it does. He takes Marv to 10 in life. Next subscriber will be the stream boss. That's pretty cool. Uh, Sisk is the only one that does that. <laughs> Put you at your lowest HP, buddy. I can't swing here because even though I have first strike, he'll still survive that and he'll come back. So, uh, No swings. He does have a, a good block here, unfortunately. Can I remove counters from Saga's end standard? Um, I don't think there's a way in standard that you can remove a lore counter, but there is a clause on a Saga that even if you were able to remove the counter, uh, once that ability has been triggered, you would not be able to trigger that ability again. Okay. Um... So, I am going to try to attack. We're going to go one, two. And uh, the reason I left back two is because now that I've attacked, I want to go ahead and... Oh, cancel. I want to tap, declare, I want to destroy this creature... And now it's going to ask me to pay the one black and tap um, X. So we're going to tap two, hit done. And this should try to destroy uh, Teferi Sentinel here. Now we'll see what happens. He may have some um, some answers for me, but 
This is all before blockers with our last priority after declaring attacks. This way, we're already attacking with our Vigilance creature. In Dev's deck tech, he said, you know, this comes up a lot. And, and it just did. The very first time that we swung with Ariel, the interaction came up. So, you know, Dev said it was going to come up a lot. And it did. Um, that allowed us to get through, even with a creature that would have died in combat. So, um, that's pretty cool. And we should be setting up for an Alpha Swing, you know, any moment now. So we draw our card, and before we can go to main phase, we trigger the, the Saga again. Remember, if you remove a counter from a Saga in any form or fashion, um, you cannot trigger that so that episode of the Saga again, if you will. Uh, there is a clause against that, so you can't really do that. Um, we uh, we got the isolated chapel, which means you know now profane processions online, but we don't really need it. Um, he's at seven. Like, how much do we really need to swing with here? Like, just enough to give him lethal, I guess. I kind of like just swinging. Um, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna swing with. Um, Enough to be lethal. Alright, so this will cost three and we need five to activate it. So if he does settle me, I do want to have at least five mana next... Or so, eight mana next turn. So I think I need to swing with three creatures just so that I can have my settle. Um, new sponsor, Justin. Thank you, sir. Um, all of you that are sponsors, let's get some hype in the chat for Justin. Uh, throw the man some, like, just pelt him with golden nuts, right? Oh, that's mean, right? Yeah, sponsoring, you just get pelted with golden nuts. Um, man, that was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. I went too far. I went way too far with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, the opponent is playing playing slow. Either way, Justin, you have uh, tackled the stream boss. You are the new stream boss, man. Um, it's kind of like whose line is it anyway. It means absolutely nothing, right? Um, it's a trap. Yeah, it is a trap. I, um, I'm going to swing with this. And uh, he's white, so I'm, gonna, I'm willing to get rid of that. And we're going to do this. So we're not only lethal, but we also play around seal away. And if he does settle us, I... Um, oh, wow. Um, he just took it. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, good game, opponent. Good game. Uh, well, that was, that was our first look at our first look at Black White Knights. Let's uh, let's see what the next next players got lined up for us. Uh, that isn't how sagas work. Removing lore counters from sagas won't cause the previous ability to trigger. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Once the ability has been triggered, you cannot trigger it again. But when going from one to two, it will trigger again. Correct. Ah, I'm a G. You can't kill me, says Rush. Justin, your time was short-lived, man. I, uh, sorry about your luck, buddy. Uh, but thank you. Welcome to the community, man. Um, there we, uh, we do coffee times on, uh, make sure you follow on, um, on Patreon.com. You don't have to support over there. Just follow anyway, and I'll post, like, when coffee times are up. So, uh, everyone that is stream sponsors, you guys are welcome to come to the private shows, too, so... Um, man, we've got land. We can hit our white sources. We can play history. We can play our dude. Uh, I'm going to keep it. It doesn't look bad. We, uh, we definitely played with worse earlier. So, uh, yeah. Let's give it a shot. Maybe we'll hit one of those two drops. Rush! Taking him down! Thank you, Rush. I appreciate it, sir. Much love for you. Much love. Um, you guys love these these night stacks, don't you? I mean, I, it's I like that you guys like this as much as I do. This was my most anticipated deck. Was just like I want to see this night stack, and I was playing around again. I was playing around with you know vampire knights and you know the other knights, but I like what Dev's got going on here. The lords are just awesome. The the marshal is so far I haven't seen one of these tricolored um, cards that I didn't like. So. You love this stream boss game? Um, yeah, well, I mean, of course I love it. Uh, it's it's kind of how I make a living. 
Um, all right, so we can't really do anything this turn. Man, we are just ah, flooding, flooding hard. You're running Vampire Knights as well. They're they're decent. They they really are. Like I can't say I don't like them. That's for sure. Wow, um, he just got two lands off the top. So I mean, he's going to be hitting land drops. Ah, uh, and there is the Knight of Grace. Oh, the Knight of Grace. So the first strike's going to be really relevant. Like. I kind of want to get Knight of Grace down, but just playing a Marshal is not bad either. Like, we could play Marshal, or we'd play the History. All right, so let's look at it. If we play History, then on turn four, we can only put down yet one other creature. If we play Marshal, we can still only do the same thing on turn four. We need two, two drops on turn four to make History awesome. Um, I think I'm going to... Like, we don't get to have attacking... Yeah, we'll make it go off on turn 7, or turn, um... Turn 6 instead of turn 5. So, like, I think that's going to be the biggest the biggest thing when you're playing your history, is deciding what turn you want um, your, your final ability to go off. Okay, so we're going to get our first ability right now here on turn 3, if we would have played this. And then turn 4, we would have gotten the second trigger. And then turn 3, we would have gotten the third trigger. But, on, or sorry, three turn, sorry, <laughs> on three counters, which would have been turn 5. Um, turn 5, you would have gotten the second trigger. But on turn 5, we would have just had the two basic knights and a knight of grace, or, um, our knight of, um, or our marshal here. If we play the marshal first, we get to uh, bring this in yet a turn later, and that means that we can play a three drop and a two drop the uh, on turn five, and we know we're hitting the mana. So in, that opens us up for a lot more outs, and uh, I think that's the way I want to play it there. History first. No, I see. If I would have had a second two drop, I would have played the history first, right? Because I would have been able to follow it up with two two drops. And here I'm going to give myself uh, the opportunity to top deck yet another you know, three mana spell. So, ooh, that's going to be rough. All right, so yeah, this will work perfect. That actually doesn't work that great. Like if we if we play mimic this turn and pass, right? Next turn we play history and knight. I think we do just have to play the history now, though. Like it, it still doesn't give us as much. Like we're not going to get the the benefit from the mimics um, because mimics coming down after history means that you're just never going to be able to get that mimic in in time. Uh, so mimic was a bad draw there. Uh, but it's still going to be decent because we're going to be able to play it with um, history and then go from there. So it's not going to be bad. It'll be it'll be down before we get our um, knights you control get plus two plus one until end of turn. Oh no, no, not a glory bringer. Okay. Yeah, we just take it here, which is unfortunate. Okay, so I have no reason to use five mana this turn, so I'm going to play uh, the tap land, and then we're just going to play Mimic. all night play knight of grace swing for two okay well um yeah glory bringer is still a good card yeah yeah no nothing nothing was printed in in dominaria that just says glory bringer is a bad card all right like it still comes out and kills like your best dude. 
um, in most situations. Like, yeah, it's still a thing. You, you still got to worry about Glorbringer. And you know, because we didn't lose anything, all the decks that were extremely powerful before Dominaria are still extremely powerful decks. It's just going to matter if they kind of, um, you know, how they fall into uh, into the, the meta. Wow, Chandra, that's still a really good card, too. All right, still a really good card. Does it kill this? What does it kill? I don't know. Hmm. Um, the song is in the top left-hand corner. You should be able to see it. And uh, this particular song is uh, Pokemon Red. So, ooh, he's just making mana for a Phoenix. Oh, no. Oh, he's cycling. Okay, that's good. That's good. And that, that means that we get to, uh, you know, swing at him once. I mean, I'm just planning on getting the buff from this. And then using my uh, Sheffit Dunes to to buff all my creatures and swing for the fences like that. That is my plan. Merfolk Branchwalker. All right, uh, we are so dead. Does it give him Life Link? Well, no. If, with no Life Link, that that's not going to be that great for us. Uh, okay, so immediately after this resolves, this will leave the battlefield. That also does not use the stack. Um, I mean, we're still dead. Like, even if I history again, we're dead to to the the air guys. So. Uh, and we're gonna go, yeah, just swing for the fences. Yeah, I mean, I'm basically scooping here, guys. I, I, I know that you guys are understanding that, that I'm scooping. I get that we're dead. We're dead no matter what we do. We have no way to stop these air, air guys. So, you need it, we needed a cast out right there is what we needed. To cast out this, uh, glory bringer. But unfortunately, we did not make it. Um, you're going to Miami this Friday, and you're uh, you're going to take your Chess Guy Double Strike deck with you to uh, to play in the Ma my at the Miami LGS. Nice. Uh, so you're just going to like bounce around from LGS to LGS, like play some games. Me and Vile used to do that when we, um... Wow, did he kick it? He kicked it. Wow. Well, he gave us some more information. I mean, we, like, we know he's big on these. Wow. All right. I mean, we're still dead, though. We're dead to either of these and Chandra here, you know? Um... Well, me and Vile used to do that. When we would travel, we would, uh, we'd go to, um... We'd go to any LGS that was, you know, nearby and, um, you know, just play a game, get in a Friday Night Magic or something like that. And that was always a lot of fun. Um, and I still remember people and stuff like that. So, like, that's always cool to be able to throw the, that type of stuff into your, into your head. Um, man, Red Green Monsters, I need the Profane Procession. This does not stop Kenra's. Cast Down will stop a Glorybringer. Um, this deck needs more cast down. Uh, Silaway will stop a Glorybringer, but the Glorybringer has to already be kind of down for the count. Um, Fatal Push ain't bad, but I, it also isn't terrific in this matchup. I almost want to just drop the Fatal Push altogether and bring in some more boats. Uh, but I think I need to stay pretty aggro. Uh, so I'm not going to drop any more Fatal Pushes. 
I uh, don't think there's going to be a game where I get like extra life uh, to trade in uh, for uh, Argyle's Bloodfast because, I mean, he can race us. So we do need a, a pretty fast hand. And our hand was really clunky right there uh, with, you know, how the, the history would come in and such and not being able to put enough bodies down and stuff. So good night, James. Have a good one, bud. Uh, you got to be up at 5 a.m. Ouch, fella. Ouch. Drop one... Uh, one for a cast. Well, we've got two cast outs in the deck, and we've got our silhouettes and stuff. So, I'm I'm okay with I'm okay with what we have. All right. Well, this is a pretty decent hand. Uh, the first strike here is going to be extremely relevant. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the unclaimed territory down. You know, before I before I play the swamp, because I am going for the the, the turn three marshal. Uh, turn three marshal will give this a four power. This will be a four first striker. So I mean, like that's four powered first striker. That's that's pretty good. Ah, uh, there's the chapel. So yeah, we get to we get to go this route. I mean, I may back off and just, um, like, if he taps his turn to do a, you know, drop a three drop, um, I may just back off and play a, um, you know, silly way to, to deal with the Land of War Elves. We'll see what happens here. Jade Light Ranger. Okay, so I'm definitely going to deal with the Land of War Elves here. Oh, man. Okay, well, um, good news is we get to, uh, we get to seal this away. Can we race it? And we might just be able to trick him and make him lose everything. Ah, let's go for it. Let's go for it, right? Come on, we can go for the we can go for the go for the play. There's no way he'll block it. He did block it. Okay, so white colorless. Silway will hit the Land of War Elves. This will be considered as a white permanent on the battlefield for us. Uh, and that's going to give him his plus one, plus two. And, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, and we win, in, uh, we win in combat here. I'll take it. I'll take it. Dragon Patreon. <laughs> Uh, does uh, seal stop glory bringers exert trigger no because he will have to declare attack and that's the point where you'll actually tap the glory bringer and um, at that point you'll be putting exert onto the stack they'll have to choose the target once they choose the target then you can um yeah, we're going to go with the history. We want to get this out as quick as possible here. Uh, once they choose the, the target... Oh, goodness. All right, so white, white, colorless. Um, once they choose the target, then priority will shift. And at that point, uh, you can cast Silaway, but the exert ability will already be on the stack, so... All right, so he's going to... All right, cool. So he definitely needs to be fast, and uh, this is this is our return four. So we're actually going to see if he was hurting on ma uh, land. Um, I know that earlier he just revealed the Sky Sip Shot... Uh, Sky... Sovereign console flagship twice in a row, so he didn't choose to get land, so he might have had a couple. Uh, so we're gonna see how this goes. So, uh, remember, guys, if you guys want to play this deck, any other deck, you can always just rent from Mana Traders, and if you do, use Sideboard MTG 15 when you sign up, 
and it'll save you 15% on your first three months. Like, renting Magic cards, whether in paper or online, is a game changer, guys. Seriously, game changer. Um, all right. So he's cycling. Like, that is a great sign for us because, I mean, we're about to drop this Marshall. Um, yeah. So we're going to go white, white. And we're going to say white. And play the Marshall. And, I mean, we're we're pushing damage now, fellas. We're pushing some serious damage now. And next turn, we're looking at stopping his blocker um, and finishing him off. Like, he can't deal with everything we have here. So even Glorybringer killing our Marshal, um, we still should have lethal on the opponent. So we'd have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... Yeah, we'd have 13. So, um, and a single blocker won't stop us because of the cast out. Unless he's got blossoming defense. No, nope, there's his glory bringer. All right, so does he play it defensively or does he kill the marshal? All right, good game opponent. Uh, I think we just have lethal on, on battlefield. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, and then the then we'll get uh, six more from our history, and um, that would have uh, that would have more than ten. So, yeah, um, I think we just run it back. Uh, we just just want to stay as fast as possible against you know these quarry bringer decks, and we just have to get in before they start getting their big four fours and stuff out. Um, this deck plays a lot like, you know, the, the vampire decks that we've played in the past that just had a lot of lords and, you know, all of their creatures created other creatures and stuff. Uh, this is just a little bit hardier, more along the lines of like, uh, you know, a white weenie deck or something like that. And, uh, you know, that's an archetype that most of us are pretty used to. So I do not like, I do not like this. Oh my goodness. Uh, again, the swamp has, um, has just been horrible. The swamp has been so bad bad um wow so that's gonna that's gonna take us off curve here and it means that we might not be able to get our marshal down we do have a a silway um that we can probably do some shenanigans with but um you know the dauntless bodyguard this is not something you really want to play on turn one uh, i i just don't i don't like this hand guys i'm gonna mulligan it all right, so we've got a little bit, a little bit more going on here. I'll keep this. I mean, again, we have the swamp, and it's not exactly what I want to be playing with. But um, we'll get down a knight's grace. I'm gonna leave that that on top. Okay, so there's a land of war elves, and uh, here we can just. Yeah, we'll wait, and then on turn three we can play uh, knight's knight of grace. And the uh, Dauntless Bodyguard um, on the Metallic Mimic. So we'll play the Knight first, just in case they go to remove the remove the Dauntless Bodyguard. Dragon Lord, my man, thank you. Look for Esper Super Friends on Reddit tomorrow. Your newest creation in paper, and thanks for all the content, man. Thank you, thank you so much. And uh, dude, like, wow. I'll check out the, the Esper Super Friends deck. Um, you and Ryan the Fire Burns both both brewing along the same lines there with the Super Friends, huh? I like it. I like it. Hopefully there's uh, like Eldest Reborn or something like that in there, right? Like there has to be Eldest Reborn in there, Dragon. All right, guys. Um, he just swung at me with his Land of War Elf. Like, what does that mean for us that he just swung with a Land of War Elf? Um, I can't play the isolated chapel because that would bring me in tap so we are going to play this and, and drop the uh the metallic mimic the bigger we can make this knight of grace the better off we're going to be whoa need those knights swamp feels like the the most brown mana in this deck yeah it it's horrible um because nothing lines up with swamp right like swamp puts your entire curve off when you have it in your opening three um, so yeah, like, I think the more I would play this deck, the more I would be kind of turned off by Swamp, so, um, 
I mean, honestly, you could probably get away with just running the other, um, like the other three copies of um, what was the unclaimed territory. Yeah, we're we're getting whooped on here a little bit, guys. Just a little bit of a whooping. Um, I could play history and then start trying to get guys down. Yeah, I, I think I play history and then play as many bodies as possible next turn. Uh, we don't know that we're getting our fourth mana. So being able to get big and get in for at least a swing or two is going to be nice. So um, this is just going to let us start going wide. That elf has drawn battle lines. Yes, it has. It has uh, as patient and as generous as life, as harsh and merciless as nature. It's pretty cool. Right, I, I like the new art on Land of War Elves. I have looked at that dude with his arms stretched out, holding that sword out. I've looked at that for so long. And then the old one that looks like half his brains pulled out of his, his helmet. I don't know. I know that's not the art, but that's what it looks like. Um, I guess it doesn't matter which, uh, which of these knights I drop. So we're going to drop this one, the black one, because we have uh, a white permanent. So that's that one's just gonna be better for us. And then we're gonna drop this one. And I guess I just choose our black permanent. Uh, because protecting it's gonna be a little bit better than uh, protecting anything else really. Yeah, I'll, I'll swing. Getting in there. You wanna block? Come on, you know you wanna block. Ooh, he took it. He took it. Um next turn, like if this isn't Glorybringer Central that we're about to see, then um Okay, does he just have a, another uh, uh, Vitrix he's going to play? I don't think this is a better card than the Phoenix. Because if you play it early, you don't have to worry about what you kill it with, right? Um, and if you play it late, yeah, it's awesome. But a Phoenix played early has to have a certain answer. Or it's just not that terrific. Oh, wow. He played four mana to destroy our, our history. Wow. All right. Well, ain't that a thing. Um, well, I don't have a lot of choices here. We're just going to play uh, Knight of Grace. And then we're going to swing. And I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and uh, kill the Land of War Elf. Just do it now. So if he wants to tap it and show me that he's got like an abrade. No, he's got zero cards in hand. So the fight is on. The fight is on. Absolutely. He's cycling. Oh my goodness. Did we just do this to red green monsters? Ah. Oh. Let's get some. Let's get some. Now we have a black and a red perm or a black and a white permanent, and I'm not letting up. We're laying the hammer down here. You can block opponent, but we don't care. You can stop one of them and take the rest. Yeah. Hope you have your kill spell. You're gonna need it. If you don't have a kill spell opponent, you are dead. That should be the other six. And it's lethal. Exaxes. Wow. The crowd goes wild. Uh, wow. What power? Dev. You. You're. You, this, this creation is, is a monster. What what have you done here, Dev? Woo. You mean. Maybe we just win some more tokens with this nice little deck here, right? Oh, who killed you? Um, you should be able to see it at the top up there. Dragon Lord uh, wanted us to wanted wanted me to take a look at at an Esper Planeswalker's deck he's got going on. Um, looks to be a pretty pretty interesting build. Um, so yeah, that's who killed you. Dragon Lord took you out, sir. Took you down. Um, 
overkill too. I mean, he's like he's like playing against you know one of the weapons from Final Fantasy VII. You know, right? Just flat overkill. Austin, what's up, dude? How you doing? Um, it is your phone wallpaper. What's your phone wallpaper? The new Lana War art, really? The full oh, the full art promos. I haven't seen those. Let's go look. Let's go look at some promos. So far, guys, we're uh, we're coming up into match three here. We're undefeated with Dev's deck. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's go look at these full art promos. Uh, Lana War Elves version. Show the promos. Where's the promos? Do they have them online? Oh, come on. Show non-promos. Show all of them. Show the ones I have. Where are these these promos? Oh yeah, by the way, those of you that are new, this is um these are the um this is Deb's ten dollar goblins that we're gonna be playing tomorrow night. So make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, and we'll be playing those. We still don't have an opponent. Like, let me check. Oh, we do have an opponent. Okay. Uh yeah, we wanna play first. I'll look for that promo in a minute. Double black! Ugh Mulligan. Oh my goodness. We're going to five, guys. We're going to five. We gotta get those swamps out of here, man. We have got to get those swamps out of this deck. Um, unclaimed territory is just better. Like this is gonna, this is gonna be painful, painful. Um, I am gonna play the black source because I've got a fatal push that I need to be using. I've got. Um, you know, the, the creature coming up next turn that I need to be using now. Uh, Unclaimed Territory wouldn't let me turn one Fatal Push, though. So, maybe there's some justification for the Swamp after all. I don't know, but I know I'm hoping I hit Runner Runner Plains or Isolated Chapel or Concealed Courtyard into Isolated Chapel into Plains or something. But, yeah. Yeah. I never did see that new art. I gotta check that out. Knight of Grace, okay, I mean... It's not horrible. I'm going to try to play it before combat uh, because it'll give me a white permanent and let me do one extra point of damage. Like, they're really great with each other. Scatter. All right. We would have got the extra point of damage in, and now we know we, we're not getting sealed away this turn. If he wants to seal us away next turn, that means he's tapping out, which actually doesn't mean much because we don't have any pressure. That's horrible, right? Mulligan to five. Brutal. Let's just hit... Let's hit eight. Oh, we hit the concealed courtyard. That's a start. That is a start. Oh, man. Can Ariel take us all the way? Can he use... Will he use all of his removal on these early creatures and then we just take it away with Ariel? Show me the Silloway. No Silloway. Just going to take it. Are people not running Silloway? What is going on? Ah, uh, yeah, hexproof from white. Okay, so uh, Knight of Malice is a two black. Who oh, is cycling two black? Or sorry, one black, one colorless. First strike, hexproof from white. All right, so that doesn't mean like protection from white, like the old knights. Like I know you guys are like looking at this, going, "Ooh, the knights are back," but not exactly. Um, ay ay ay. He Hexproof from white means that white spells can't target it, white uh, abilities can't target it, like, but a white creature can still block it, which is a little bit weird to me because I'm used to protection. White creatures can deal damage to it, um, so that type of stuff is still going to happen. Uh, you can still put your angel in front of it, it'll still do, do damage, it'll still gain lifelink, you can, you know, all of that stuff still works, so. Um, but yeah, that's... The knights are just awesome. I, I love both of them, and I do like playing them in the same deck as they turn each other on. So, <laughs> if this was if this was Rudy's channel, it would be a giggity right there. Uh, yeah, seal's a great white spell, and we got to see earlier how you can put seal into um, how you can use seal uh, to actually you know be that white source. Uh, so I really like the black knight in here. Um, not the Black Knight, the Knight of Malice, but you guys know what I mean. Uh, but I do like the, the Black Knight in here as 
there's so many white permanents, it's really easy to turn him on where you need, uh, you know, one of your multicolor or something like that to be able to turn on the white ones. Fumigate. Whatever. Whatever. He foomed me. He fumigated me. Basic swamps and four white, 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 or white cards don't mix. Yeah, I know, I know, Marv. Like, I looked at it too, and I was like, yeah, it's not that great. Uh, it's not what I want to see. Um, white source off the top would be terrific. Search for Ascanta. All right, well, looks like he's getting ahead of us. Come on, land. There it is. It's not a white source, so we're going this route. We're going to go Ariel. No point in attacking. Now he's got to stop the 5-5. Five five. Um, that's kind of that's kind of cool. Um, means you know we still get to do things. Another Fumigate? Oh, <laughs> not an Ixalan's binding. All right. All right, opponent. You got me. You got me. Knight of Grace. We can get that down. That's a thing. Still no point in attacking. Maybe we'll get a cast out or something and get our Ariel back. I would rather pull a cast out than an Ariel. Right? Oh, man. Yeah, the, the swamps have just killed us, guys. Like, we've seen multiple games where, like, if you're going to be running these, just having any... Like, you need to be splashed on that other color if you're expecting to drop this on turn three on any type of consist consistency, so. Um, oh, he's got a chapter of the uh, history of Benelia on him. Some aspire to climb the mountain of honor. The Benelish are born upon its peak. And from there, ascend among the stars. Wow. Wow. Well, we did get our... Our other white source, so we might be able to get this creature down. And the Supreme Will. We can't pay for it. I guess I just clock Gideon here. And, you know, just, uh, you know, put a little damage on him. And we know it's kind of coming. Uh, that, you know, Gideon's going to slowly make us require more creatures than we can drop. History would be great right here. History would be awesome. Drawing a swamp literally made him mulligan and is uh, actively killing him this... Uh, this deck is awesome. It just needs to, to lose the swamps. I'm with you, man. I am. Uh, like the like we couldn't play. We couldn't mulligan earlier because of this, like we couldn't keep the hand. Uh, you're right. We couldn't keep the hand. And um, yeah, any other lands other than swamps would have been perfect. So the actual history of Benelia is the dark cast system. Ouch! That's scary. That's like when I th when I think of the caste system, I think of like uh, like India, like that. Like I don't know. That's all I know about the caste system. Oh my gosh! I don't have any reason to. Um, any reason to save it, so. Alright, well. That's our first game that it's looked this brutal, guys. Kind of want to just head on into the next game here. Like, getting beyond this Gideon is going to be hard. Um, I mean, he's going to let us swing at him, which means he's holding settle. I mean, that's not horrible, I guess. We'll get a land. But, you know, when your control deck says, uh, I'm going to turn this here Gideon sideways, you're probably in trouble. He's like, no, I'm going to settle him. So, in my opinion, this deck 
really, really hinges on um, on being able to get your anthems and your histories and things like that in order. Uh, so now that I've actually played with the history of Benelia a little bit, and I've played with um, the uh, the Benelish Marshal or whatever his name is, I think one of the first things that we're going to have to do when we start trying to build a, a history or a knight's deck is we're going to have to look at that curve. We're going to have to look at it really, really close, guys. Like, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough two drops that if you turn three a history, you can double up on your on your creatures on turn four. You're going to want to make sure that you're, even if you don't hit a land, you're going to want enough one drops that you're dropping some creatures in there. You want to be putting as much down after history and before history goes off as possible. So, like, that's that's going to be one of the things I'm looking at. All right, he's, he's getting way ahead of us here, guys. We're not going to show him any more of our deck, even though he showed us plenty from his. So we're going to go ahead and get into the sideboard. But um, All right, so Cast Down destroys Gear Hulks. Um, Argyle's Bloodfast is really good in this matchup. I don't think I need these Fatal Pushes, so we're just going to drop those. Profane Procession will get uh, you know some of his creatures. Silent Gravestone is actually really good against uh, Gear Hulks, but I really want these Blood Craze Paladins in. Um, I think I'll cut one Ariel, and um, this is a decent matchup for Metallic Mimic, as he's not going to have a lot of blockers. And I think I'll just cut a Bodyguard here and run back like that. Uh, duress, maybe maybe we could run the duresses, but I'm on the play, and. Um, I think I would want those dresses to, to stop him later. I just want to be as fast as possible here. Um, so, yeah, there's an argument for duress, right? And if we're on the draw, I would definitely uh, be trying to to catch up. But here, I'm, I'm just going to try to be quicker. And I don't know if this hand's going to be that quick, but we're going to find out. We'll throw down our uh, Knight of Malice and then, or our Mimic, and then follow that up with the Knight of Malice and. Uh, Ariel and go from there. Hopefully we won't see a blue land here. Like I would love to dodge at dodge essence scatter for a couple turns. Doesn't look like we're gonna get there. Alright, well <clears throat> we do dodge essence scatter. Wow, he already passed. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, this is not going to be real bad. I would like to hit uh, another... Oh, wow. Yeah, I'd like to hit another two-mana creature. Or that. Um, that'll actually be really good use of our land here. He has to, he has to kind of stop us right here. Like, he needs to kill something, or... Yeah, he's got to stop this creature. He can't let this hit, so the Essence Scatter has to happen here. Supreme Will? Okay. Uh, no, we're not going to pay for it. Yeah, if he, if he wasn't able to stop that and he couldn't settle on four, um, then we were looking at um, just having him lethal. All right, so we get to get a couple lands here. That's not horrible. Um, I'll go ahead and play a must counter. Like He needs to counter this spell. So... If he does counter it, then he's dead. And I'm just going to try to gain two, two lands off of him here. I mean, it's still a swing for ten. Alright, so we'll get the two land. Uh, I'm going to grab... I mean, now I guess I could take Swamp Swamp, but, um, Plains, and I have two Black Sources. Yeah, I'll just take one of each. 
<clears throat> so next turn we've got some real good options available to us. Uh, we can play our Knight of Malice, and we can attack and make a token. Um, so he needs to fumigate right here, or um, if he doesn't fumigate, then he at least needs to have another settle available. I guess this is fumigate. Regal Caracal. Okay. That's not bad. So, one, two, three. All right, the isolated chapel's nice here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, okay, so one, two, three. Black, colorless. Um, we're just going to swing with our Ariel. And I'm going to let him block, actually. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so he's going to put everything in front of it. Uh, yeah, we're okay with uh, stacking the damage this way because the Regal Caracal is not going to be there after damage. So I'm just going to hit OK. And before uh, this, <laughs> before blockers, we're actually going to... Uh, hold on, let me cancel that. Make sure I do it right. Uh, we're going to go tap. We're going to choose to destroy the Regal Caracal. I'm going to pay one black, and we're going to tap. Oh, no. Wait a minute. I can't tap this one. Oh, I messed up! Yeah! I did mess up, so we have to trade this for... for both. Okay, well that's fine. We can kill everything here. We can still do, we can still do it. It just, I don't get to survive. This doesn't survive the trade. Alright, so we'll choose a... Yeah, I... I looked at that wrong. I thought that I would be able to tap this one as well. Let's make sure I've got the ability right. We're killing the cat. We're paying the mana. We're tapping this creature. We're tapping this creature. We're hitting done. It'll destroy cat trade uh, with his cats. Yeah, we're all right. We're all right. We'll be fine. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that got that got horrible. I was making sure. Should have just attacked with one knight. Well, he was... Um, he was summoned sick. Couldn't attack with him. Maybe I should have just sacrificed uh, Shepherd Dunes. Instead of playing everything. Tefari. So what do you do with Teferi here? Draw a card. Seems good. I mean, it's not like we didn't have a backup, right? How's it going? We're in our uh, we're in match three and uh, we're in game two. We have won everything up until now, so Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice this. This, uh, this lets me have lethal, lethal on, uh, Teferi here. And then I can still cast, uh, Knight of Grace after. Let's go ahead and do that now in case he, he has some way to stop me. This way I can get the benefit from the, the t Metallic Mimic. And I'll just attack him for three. I, I mean, he could have some type of bounce, but I kind of expect Teferi to take this. Alright. I mean, that's not bad. Was that a punt? Um, the punt was swinging, but the backup... I mean, it's kind of a punt, trading all of his cats... For our, um, our Ariel, when we have another Ariel, is probably not... That probably wasn't a punt. It's probably 
um, going to be a decent play for us. Uh, remove up to three tar uh, exile target creature. Um, so, I mean, if he exiles a creature... Okay. Um, that's pretty decent for us. I mean, at this point, he's just... He's just fending. He's, he's just fending off um, to the best of his ability here. And we're just gonna... We're gonna attack him. We're gonna attack a Johnny. We're gonna go to second main phase, play our Ariel. And, um... Yeah, that's, that's like the best we can do right now. He may just be like playing around a profane procession. I don't 100% know on that, but uh, we'll find out. So we've got our 5-5 five five back. He does need to wipe the board here. Carnage Tyrant. Oh, the Carnage. Um. Well, that just won the game, ladies and gentlemen. I think it did. Let's see. Three and... Yeah. Three and we get to make yet another dude even after we swing. Yeah, that's good. So one, two, three, four, and the colorless, and uh, we'll sacrifice this. And what it is is we're gonna have so many guys that if he can't wipe the board next turn, then uh, we swing through for lethal anyway. Um, yeah, he's gonna scoop it up, and he—I guess he can see the writing on the wall there. Um, we would have been able to swing. He blocks the six power. He loses his carnage tyrant. Uh, if he doesn't block the six power, he's dead. Um, and plus, after that, we were also going to be able to make another dude. So, um, I don't think that was a punt when we actually killed the uh, the cat. I think if we would have let the cat stick around, we'd have probably been in more trouble. So, um, I want the Sky Sovereign console flagships. It looks like he's definitely trying to fly over. Um, if he's uh, on the Carn Carnage Tyrant plan, then yeah. Um, now that we're on the draw, I'm going to put more emphasis on the duress, which I'm getting rid of the bodyguards. May or may not be the right play, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, cast out's going to be decent, getting uh, some of his his things, but I no longer like Profane Procession, even though he's still got Gear Hulks. Um, do we drop a cast out and just go with the Duresses? Silhouette? I think I'm going to cut one Silhouette, because we're not getting a Carnage Tyrant with that. We, we might get the... Um, the other stuff, but he also may take off the Carnage Tyrant plan, even though he's on the, the game, on the play. I think the only other card I want to cut is like a Metallic Mimic. Um, I do want these uh, Sky Sovereigns. I want to be in the air, so um, right. It's never it, it's never uh, never a punt when we win, right? New house rule. It's never a punt when we win. Um, yeah, well, it's a Bob Ross punt, right? Like happy mistakes, happy mistakes. So, yeah, it's a Bob Ross punt. Like, it's, we're just going to call it a, I don't know, I can't call it an Afro punt because then people would take that wrong. People who didn't know who Bob Ross was, but, um, all right. What do we take out for this last card? Argyle's Bloodfast, maybe? I don't think so. I think Argyle, this is the, let's take out one Blood Craze Paladin, and then we'll just submit like that. Yeah, we'll go that route. Drop a swamp, <laughs> right, Marv? Marv's like, just the swamps, just fix the land base, and this deck's gonna be sweet. Well, we got three white mana, I'm keeping. Um, <laughs> got three white mana, we're good. Watch, watch, we're gonna draw a, draw all of our black creatures now, right? Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna hit the history and roll with it. Uh, lean with it, rock with it, right? Another white. Do I cycle this cast out and try to come back, you know, as aggressive as possible? I think we would only do that if we seen him, like, miss a land drop or something like that. I think at that point we would just be, you know, going, you know, just hammer to the metal, you know. Pedal to the metal, let her rip. Okay. 
Okay, so he's going to slow us down a lot this game. So this cast out is going to become more valuable. Um, yeah, that, that's all. That's that slows us down a lot, right? We won't see a marshal this game. You're probably right. And a marshal would be great, considering it would um, it would crew. It would crew. Well, next turn I can cast Knight of Grace and seal away. So let's uh, let's get in there with the history and see if we can make some dudes. Happy trees. If you're just now typing happy trees, you're probably behind a little bit. Make sure you hit live to catch up to the to the action there. Um, he'll see that in about three minutes. Oh, there's the duress. All right, so we need to top deck a black source. Man, I can't believe he supreme willed us. Top decking a black source would just be... It'd be gravy. Um, yeah. Oh, he's got all of the answers. All of the answers. Okay. He's got a bunch of lands, but he's willing to get rid of land. I mean, I don't think that when I was playing, like, Bant Control and stuff, I don't think I ever cycled it unless I just absolutely had to. No! Um, cycling a cast out. I, I want to hit a land. All right. Now we actually need the black sources, guys. Take me to Vegas. I'm good at slots. Right? Well, you just called the yeah, swamp and... Uh, right. Good job for Dev. Dev did a great job. He did. Like, the deck has been awesome. I, if this is the only game we've lost is to this control deck when we beat the mid-range deck. We beat red-green aggro, guys. Like, red-green monsters. We we beat red-green monsters. How cool is that? Two at a time, opponent. Two at a time. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, opponent. He was so sweet, wasn't he? Oh my goodness, he just gave us a black land, so now we can cast our spells. Oh my god. Um, come on, come on. Now you're back on time. Welcome back there, Matt. Welcome back, buddy. Um, let's let's make him counter something. Let's take a look. Let's take a look and see what he's got. Fumigate, Fumigate, Essence Scatter. Um, let's take a Fumigate. And then, uh, as far as Essence Scatter goes, like we can just get around that. I need more Black Sources for Argyle's Blood Fast now. Oh, he top decked a Gideon. Top decked a Gideon. All right, all right, opponent. Uh, isolated Chapel. That's gonna be pretty decent. Um, so we know he top decked a Gideon. Let's let Gideon swing. Let's let Gideon swing. Alright, so we'll pass turn here. We got rid of the other Fumigate. Now what I'm hoping for is um, that he plays the he swings with the Gideon, he tries to close the game out. Um, if he does, we'll seal it away. Search for Ascanta. Well, that's going to flip. Not a lot I can do about that. Gideon. 4-4. Four, four, till end of turn. Does it have Vigilance? Guess what? No Vigilance on Gideon. 
Got him. Got him. All right. Now, we can trade that four points of life to draw two cards here. Ooh, cast down might not be bad. Um, yeah. Like, I could draw draw cards, or I could get down Big Boat right now. I think I'm just going to go for the Big Boat. We're just going to... We're just going to go for Big Boat. And, um, yeah. We know he's got one Essence Scatter in hand. So, we know what his hand is. Um, and... Does he pitch a card? He did not pitch a card. Okay. He did not play a land. We know he's got this, this Scatter. So, we need some way to crew Big Boat. That would crew Big Boat. Well, let's get the Essence Scatter out of his hand. Um, he has to counter it because it will crew the boat. Go big boat. Go big... Oh, wow. Okay. I'll, I'll bite. Do you have a settle for me, opponent? I mean, if what do you got? Like, did he top deck cast out? Oh, he's gonna glimmer and just like go for an answer. Okay, I mean. Okay. I mean, that seems like really, really risky to let that hit the battlefield like that. Um, I mean, he's still got Essence Scatter, and now he's got two other cards. So, and now he's going to get to start, like, digging. So, yeah, I mean, there's, he's got things going on. There's a Gideon. Okay. Uh, so he prevents the damage dealt by Gideon. I'm going to draw a card here. So we'll, uh, we'll pay two life and we'll draw a card. Unclaimed territory. White source. Let's play the land. And let's kill Gideon. We'll sacrifice the desert. We'll say yes. We'll attack Gideon. I assume that he's just gonna like search for Ezkanta unless he like happened to top deck. He got. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm gonna take more swamps. Uh, mainly because, like, uh, mainly because swamp is what we're gonna use to draw cards with. So, yikes. All right. Well, we got a Gideon we have to fight. And, uh, yeah. Alright. Alright, Gideon. So, just drawing cards is going to be the way to go. He's still got that Essence Scatter, guys. Ah, oh, Still no Marshall? Come on, Alba. I don't even want to hear that. I know, I know. Oh, he's going to try to close it out. He's getting there. He's like, I can dig my way through this. He's going to dig his way through it. Alright. So he's just going to use his search for as content and just dig his way to, to victory there. Uh, I'm going to draw a card, take some more damage. I mean, he's pressuring us at this point, especially considering I'm paying two life to draw cards. Oh, 
then we draw and play it. Uh, maybe. We'll see what happens. We're, we're definitely going to be drawing for cards here. That will buy a, um, that'll buy an Essence Scatter right there. Has to, right? He has to Essence Scatter that. That Knight of Malice, he has to scatter that, right? I mean, come on. You gotta scatter a Knight of Malice, right? He scatters! this to crew because it's Ariel and that's what she does we have no clue what his last card is we did get the essence scatter out of his hand and um, yeah I can take Gideon to one right here but I don't think that's exactly what I want to do oh no what do you got opponent cast him casting me out Ugh. what are you casting out what are you casting out all right, well, he cast out Big Bo. Well, that's, uh, it's unfortunate. But unless Gideon ticks up, uh, we will still be okay. Uh, if Gideon ticks up, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble, but He becomes a 4-4 human. He's trying to close the deal. I mean, he's thinking he can protect the Gideon here. I'm definitely going to try to say no to protecting Gideon. Alright. There's another Chef at Dunes. Wow, what does he got? Regal Caracal. All right, well, it's not a legendary creature. I'm okay with that. Okay, so... So, we go one, two, one, two three, four, five. And then we have, then we can play Knight of Grace, or we can play Cast Down, and, all right, so let's do that. One, two, three, four, five. And we say, we shoot the cat. Enter combat. I mean, if he can block with one, he can block with two. So, I'm going to attack Gideon, of course. We'll let him attack. We'll let him block. Like, this is... Everything's going to get pretty serious right here. Um, so, we take the block. Cast down the other life linker. Play our blood crazed paladin, and uh, that makes sure that the blood crazed paladin is well within uh, limits to um, to um, crew the boat. I mean, he's got zero cards in hand. He's digging, you know, search for Escanta. Um, Fumigate would be pretty... Oh, my goodness. He just drew a Fumigate. All right, well, that's not the end of the day for us. Um, it's horrible, but it's not the end of the day. All right. I mean, we're going to two, and then we kill Gideon on the backswing. And 
and we flip our... Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay, guys. We, we still got this. All right, so we flip. We may transform Argyle's Bloodfest. Yes, we would love to transform Argyle's Bloodfest. We'll play this other land. We will play our Knight of Grace. And we don't have a black permanent no more. Oh my goodness, I shouldn't have transformed. <laughs> All right, fine, fine, fine. We've got backup, we've got backup. Wow, okay, so if I hadn't have transformed, I, um, wow. All right. All right, uh, so we're gonna crew. First strike. Oh, he's got settle, you think so? You think so? I think he was just playing that we didn't have another creature. So, yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna move to combat. We, we have to try to kill Gideon here. I mean, killing Gideon is is gonna be, like, our big go-to here. Like, we just need... Needed that Gideon dead. So, all right. We got around the settle. He's digging. What has he got? What does he go get? What are you going to reveal? Right, I was going to, Dragon Lord. I was 100% ready to, to tap. Like, that was why I wanted to, to flip this, but I didn't realize that it was my only black permanent. I didn't think about that. Um, when it becomes a land, it becomes, uh, lands are colorless. They produce colored mana, but they're colorless, so, uh, yeah. Oh, and priorities on me, my bad. He gets a Teferi. That's, um, that's a thing. So if he bounces this with Teferi, then that's going to be pretty bad. Uh, if he bounces Seal away... No, he's just going to draw a card and untap some lands. See, I think that before you play that, he should have used this ability and then untapped that. But he can do that next turn when he's got a bunch of mana, right? He's got the Caracal. Oh, no. That's going to be... That's going to be rough. It's going to be very, very rough. Come on, give me a creature... That is a Knight of Grace. <clears throat> okay. We kill the Caracal. And we swing it to Fairy. And then we eat our dude. Oh man, it's horrible, right? It's horrible. We're gonna do it though. So we declare attack at Teferi. And we shoot the Regal Caracal. And um, now we can just eat one of these. We don't have to eat our our Sky, uh, Sky Sovereign here. Uh, we can just eat our um, our Knights of Grace. Uh, so we don't have to, uh, to worry about doing it right now. So uh, he can go to swing for two here and uh, we'll just... We'll just tap and, and eat, eat a dude. If he has disallow, I mean, he would have been able to stop it there. We do need any guy or black permanent off the top. Without him drawing more answers off the top. I mean, Search for Escanta, like, lets you get Planeswalkers. The card's so good. What did you get? What did he get? He got a Teferi. And he played it, and then we swung it. Oh, no. Carnage Tyrant. Ugh. The history... Well, this is not exactly what I want to ha have happen. Um, yeah. This Carnage Tire is going to be real hard to beat. 
He glimmers. Okay, well, uh, let's see what happens here. So the idea is I need to crew and block Carnage Tart and uh, block a cat and eat a knight. So we block everything and we eat a knight. You don't swing with the cats? He does swing with the cats. Okay. So we can't block all those and that. So we have to just block the Carnage Tyrant. Alright, so let's crew and see if he has, like, cast out or whatever. I assume he has something. Does he move to blocks? Does he allow me to block? Does he have an answer? Alright, so I go to block here. And he's got three points of damage. Oh, no. Four, five points of damage. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have to eat the Sky Sovereign. Or I'm just dead. No. Alright, so because Carnage Tyrant's got Trample, he's going to get two additional points of damage over, which would take me to zero. But I also have these two cats coming, which would take me a negative two. So when I eat this, I'll only go back to zero. Um, and it's two. So I could gain five here, but I don't kill the Carnage Tyrant. Uh, which means I would have been better off blocking both of these guys and then crewing after blocks and then eating um, I guess okay so we're gonna we're gonna sacrifice our our guy which means we still take more damage than we gained off of it so we're still dead yeah he got us he got us uh, carnage tyrant was just too much um, all the options like it just didn't put us there yeah Right, the struggle is real. Yeah, we were dead anyway. Um, where's those promo? Is this it? Is this the new promotional Lana War Elves? Is that the background on your phone there, Albatross? Looks pretty cool. If that's it. Um, yeah. Well, guys, uh, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun playing Deb's new deck. Uh, it's, you know, it's good to see us back in the in the season here. Uh, we went, you know, two and one with it. Uh, not a bad deck. Had some really cool lines. I misplayed. Should have blocked uh, both cats and sacked the artifact. For I, I did mention that. You might be just a little behind there, Brandon. Um, yeah, the, the, the better play was to block the cats and then eat. Um, but I still would have only been at 7, and I would have taken 7 that way as well. Um, so, yeah. I, I would have still been dead, uh, even with that. So, misplay or not, we were dead to all lines, yeah. Um, but yeah, hey guys, like, we've got Deb's deck coming up tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to be playing his budget deck, and it's the first, first budget deck of a, the Dominaria season for us to start playing with, and I'm um, pretty excited about it. It's the $10 Goblins deck, and uh, that's it here right in front of you guys. So, my thoughts on the Black White uh, Knights deck, what are you guys' thoughts on the Black White Knights deck? Personally, uh, Metallic Mimic was okay, but uh, wasn't like the greatest thing in the world. Um, swamps were horrible. Oh my goodness, swamps were so bad. Um, I would rather take the chances at having the games where it, it's hard for me to cast a Fatal Push than I would take the chance where I can't cast a Marshall until like turn, you know, five or six or even seven. That was horrible. That was horrible. The swamps have got to go. Uh, other than that, the deck's pretty sweet, guys. I really like it. I, I think that it's uh, it's got the tools we need to, to fight in the meta. It's extremely strong and um, only about uh, 90 bucks on MTGO, so not a bad deal. Um, I mean, for the price of about three months of Mana Traders, you know, you could just rent and play this and play everything else. So, Sporling was a budget build. Okay, Sporling was a budget build. Well, this is his first super budget, under $10. He didn't even build a sideboard. I had to build a sideboard. Uh, so I stuck like five bucks in the sideboard, but either way. 
Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that goblin stack. We're just going to turn things sideways, throw goblins at people. Siege Gang Commander. It should be Rush's new favorite card because it's just kind of one of those, like, I'm going to throw these goblins at you kind of things, right? Either way, guys, I hope you had a lot of fun. And if you decide that you want to start renting with Mana Traders, you want to be able to play with all of the decks, use Sideboard MTG15 as your coupon code. When you sign up, you'll save 15% on your first three months. Sideboard MTG15. Guys, thank you so much for, for watching. Uh, thanks for everyone coming out. We had a great crowd tonight. So, uh, you know, if I miss people in chat and things like that, hey, sorry I missed the shout-outs. You know, chat's flying by. I'm still trying to really get used to, to that. But I had a lot of fun with you guys. And I uh, hope you guys had a lot of fun with uh, Deb's creation. Don't forget to go over and check out the deck tech. He explains why these cards are in here and why he chose this card or other cards. Um, even put in the comments that he knows that Silent Gravestone, Silent Gravestone may not be the best option for this deck. Uh, but he picked Silent Gravestone anyway because of what it does to some of the other cards. So, Absolutely. Good night, y'all. Um, Use the links in the description box. Dragon Lord, thank you very much. I'm actually going to go check out your Super Friends deck uh, right now. Um, if you guys want to help support the channel, you can uh, throw a buck on Patreon. You can, um, you know, support us here on live chat, sponsor the stream, become the stream boss. There's a ton of ways that you can help support the channel. And I, I greatly appreciate it. And that's why we can play these decks in, you know, competitive games, competitive leagues, things like that. Thank you, my, thank you so much, guys. I had a lot of fun. We'll see you next time here on Sideboard MTG. Stick around for the credits, and uh, the next stream is... Can't you just see like Donatello getting down on that guitar? Just just rocking it right here. That's Leo over there on the on the piano, right? It's gotta be Leo, right? Because we know we know Don or uh, we know that Mikey is on the drums, you know. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man, of course. What do you mean, which group? 